So Meta has been training their AI on books they pirated. Lots and lots of books. And we kind of already knew this, but a lot more emails have been uh, disclosed. And turns out that it's even worse than we thought. Let's see if Meta used a pirated books database to steal my life's work as a creator and an author to um, train their AI without my consent, without compensation, totally against my will. I typed in my name, 50 results. Great. So every single book I have ever written. Um, yep. So my work has been um, scraped to train AI in many different languages. That's awesome. On March 20th, 2025, an article was posted on The Atlantic that shocked the writing world in a way that it never really had before. The article was written by Alec Reisner and was titled The Unbelievable Scale of AI's Pirated Books Problem. Meta pirated millions of books to train its AI. Hi, welcome to my channel. I'm Mary. This is more of a commentary video and I don't really, well, I haven't really done those on my channel very much. I post more writing tips and storytelling tips for writers to use and implement in their own writing. But I just knew I had to talk about this because it makes my blood boil. I am sick of big companies taking advantage of the little guy and stealing their work, ripping them off, and not giving them credit, simply because they think they can get away with it. The thing is, I highly doubt anybody on Meta's team truly understand the blood, sweat, and tears that go into creating a book that you hold very dear to your heart, and their actions, as I am about to get into, trample all over the idea with no mercy or compassion, clearly showing how little they respect the very people who are helping them profit. Quick disclaimer, because I have to say this, I am not a journalist. I've never been very good at researching topics and gathering information, and so I'm most certainly am going to forget and leave stuff out that you might think I should not have forgotten and left out. But I'm just making this video to get the ball rolling. I saw a discourse on it on TikTok, but I haven't seen anything on YouTube. Granted, it's a new story, so I'm sure there's time. But I thought it was important that I jump in and spread the word because it's not okay. My jaw was on the floor when I first heard this story because it was so unbelievably messed up. AI has been a huge conversation in recent years, particularly as it affects artists who post their work for free online and then get it stolen. But now it's clear that it's not only people who like post their art online and then it gets stolen off Pinterest. No, now it's clear that it is people who require purchase of their work in order for you to enjoy it. Like authors, you have to buy the book to read the story. But just because certain people require you to purchase their product does not mean that AI can't still steal them because there are illegal websites out there that allow pirating. Piracy is nothing new. People have been pirating books and movies and TV shows and music for years, okay? And I truly don't ever think it'll be eradicated in full. It's just too prevalent of an issue and there will always be people finding out new ways in order to pirate these things. But you know what we're not gonna do? We're not going to use millions of illegally pirated books to benefit billion dollar companies so that they can compete with the people that they're stealing from. We're not gonna do that. Turns out the article that I mentioned is part of a greater journalistic investigation that is being done by The Atlantic on a database called Libgen, or, you know, it's government name, Library Genesis. It's one of the largest pirating libraries online, if not the largest, with, get this, 7.5 million books and 81 million research papers. This is pirating. It's thievery. These are bandits and not the fun kind that we like to root for in stories. So pirating the work that people have slaved over for many years is wrong, objectively. But like I said, what's worse is billion dollar companies using these illegal materials to train their AI systems to steal the writing style and the content from these books without permission. Basically, the rundown, the basic gist, is that Meta used LibGen to train its database with millions of illegally published books. That's a fact. And this is huge. It's also a major class action lawsuit. Copyright infringement, right there, my dude. This whole conversation began when some sealed communications between Meta employees were unsealed thanks to a copyright infringement lawsuit filed by comedian and actress Sarah Silverman, loved her and Monk, and other authors who had their books pirated on LibGen. Apparently, the senior manager at Meta said it's really important for Meta to get books ASAP, since books are 
actually more important than web data because AI requires very long bodies of high quality texts in order to efficiently analyze and produce their own content. Content. Take that how you want. I personally think it reinforces the fact that stealing those books is wrong because of the hard work people have put into them to make them such high quality. To be clear, nobody is denying the fact that Meta used a material from LibGen to train its AI. The argument, the disagreement, I guess, is that it wasn't wrong for them doing so. That's their argument, that it was under fair use. For them to use and which we'll get into later a little bit um but not only did meta do this they specifically got permission from marky z the zucker b mark zuckerberg to use the data taken from libgen they got permission from the ceo of facebook to use illegally pirated books to train their ai and you're not going to believe why actually you probably are <laughs> i don't think it's surprising in the slightest so i don't personally know how training artificial intelligences work, but as far as I'm aware, had Meta just reached out to the authors personally to ask for permission to purchase their work and use it to pay them for it, we wouldn't be having this issue right now because two things would have happened. Either the authors would have said no and then avoided the issue altogether, or they would come to an agreement about purchasing it and then send the data over to Meta to use. But Meta didn't want to do that. No, why would they? First of all, they said that it would be incredibly slow, taking over four weeks to deliver that kind of data, you know, with correspondences and whatnot. And they didn't want to take the time to do that because they wanted to compete on the same timeline as ChatGPT and other competitors. They can't take the time to do things ethically when other companies are doing it faster. They're going to get run out. They're not going to be able to compete. Oh my gosh, atrocities. But they also said that it would be unreasonably expensive. Of course it would be expensive because instead of stealing over 10 million books and research, actually almost a hundred million books and research papers together, you would have to rightfully pay the authors of those works. And if we're going to average $15 per book, which is generous, might I add, that is like a lot of money. So because Meta is cheap and likes to cut corners for personal gain, they decided to pirate all of the material instead of purchasing it and going through the long process of asking for permission. And remember, Zuckerberg gave them the explicit permission to do so. Nice. The thing is, is that Meta is claiming fair use of the content that they used since LLMs, which are large language models. It's a type of AI. I'm not totally clear on the whole ins and outs of that industry. I don't know very much about AI. But anyway, they're claiming that since LLMs transform the work from the original content into something else, that it's fine, that it's fair use. But even if that were true, using LibGen means that they still accessed pirated works as well as possibly distributing illegal pirated works to other people because of how these websites work. Again, I don't know the ins and outs very much, but apparently by downloading content, you upload content or something. Although the defense is claiming that apparently they took steps to avoid redistributing it, but there's currently no evidence to suggest or prove either way. I guess. I guess that's not something that's traceable. Nonetheless, it is very much illegal activity. Piracy is illegal, especially on such a big scale like LibGen is perpetuating. There are no safeguards when working with an illegal organization or a database like LibGen. And it's much better to just avoid it at all costs, which yes, does lead to more lengthy and expensive processes, but that's what is ethical. That is what is right. You're going to sit here and you're going to look at me and you're going to say, I just don't want to spend the money when you're stealing from small indie authors. Oh my gosh. This is why AI in general sucks. Yes, it has some uses, it really does. And if the people who were creating these AI systems were 100% morally pure, if it were God that was creating this AI, we wouldn't have an issue with it, right? Because they would take the ethical steps to do so. The problem is that man is creating AI and man is corrupt. So yeah, AI sucks in general because it is built on a foundation of stealing from other people, stealing work, stealing creations, stealing products, books, movies from other people and profiting off of it without giving back to the people that it is stealing from. Reisner does mention in his article certain problems that can arise 
in terms of these accusations against Meta and Facebook. For one, the LibGen database is not the same as it was when Meta first referenced it back in, I think, 2023, 2024, with more titles added that may not have been in the initial scandal. So just because your book is on the LibGen database does not mean that Facebook used it to train their AI, but that doesn't negate the fact that it's on a, an illegal pirating website and other AI systems might have used it. We don't know. Authors like Stephen King, J.K. Rowling, Victoria Aveyard have all been pirated on this website and likely used in Meta's training. There's no denying that Meta employees knew the dangers of what they were doing. No matter how they spin it, they took precautions to mitigate the consequences because they knew it was wrong. They stated in these communications that are coming to light because of this lawsuit, they stated that it was medium to high legal risk and refused to answer queries like reproduce the first three pages of Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone and remove data clearly marked as pirated slash stolen and do not externally cite the use of any training data, including LibGen. And lastly, torrenting from a corporate laptop doesn't feel right. Hmm. I wonder why. I wonder why. That's a good question. Major credit needs to be given to Alec Reisner, who blew the whistle on this whole thing. He also created a database that will allow you to search whether a title is on LibGen. And if you are an author, I highly recommend you look for your own book on there. It's a free resource and I will link it in the description down below. Very interesting. But just because you might think that you are too small of an author or you're too indie to be pirated from, think again. I thought I was too small time an author to have my books pirated, but it's on LibGen, which is the website that Meta used to pirate books to train its AI. This is a problem for indie authors like me who are exclusive to Amazon because in Amazon's terms of service, it says that we cannot be on any other websites. They don't care if your book was pirated. If it shows up on another website, it's automatic grounds for potential termination. Um, so now I have to send a cease and desist letter uh, to LibGen. And I also have to make the decision, do I stay exclusive to Amazon or do I now go wide um, so that I don't get penalized by Amazon for my book being pirated? If you are a person who pirates books, especially books by indie authors, as this author explained, another problem that arises is that pirating hurts a lot of indie authors who exclusively sell on Amazon. Regardless of your views on Jeff Bezos, Amazon is a very popular site for small authors to distribute their books because it's popular and it's easy to get into. But a lot of times, and I don't know, I've never sold on Amazon, so I don't understand how this partnership works, but as I've heard Amazon will often go into exclusive partnerships with authors so that their book can only be sold and distributed on Amazon in like a non-compete clause. This means, okay, that if Amazon finds any reason to believe that you have broken that agreement, aka distributing your content on another site, they reserve the right to no longer distribute your book, to take your book down and not allow you to sell it anymore. Even if the content that they find elsewhere is clearly pirated and not uploaded by the author. And this can be devastating to small authors who have very few options when it comes to distributing their books. They don't have the backing of a big publisher, perhaps, and so they have to do the labor of marketing and distributing and publishing. Amazon is a very good resource for that. This is a tragedy that can be avoided if people would stop uploading illegal, stolen material. Say what you will about pirating and pirating websites, okay? I think that they're ethically wrong, but I know that there are arguments for certain instances like textbooks. Textbooks can be crazy expensive for broke college students to afford. I personally have only read one pirated book in my life in the past, so I'm not saying it's beneath me. I have done it, but over time as I have become more informed and I have developed a better opinion about it, obviously I think it's wrong. I don't think you should do it. Uh, if you can avoid it at all costs, the better. Just, you know, keep yourself from being, like, I don't know, in the wrong somewhere. I'm also a writer now. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want my works getting stolen. I understand the argument a lot of people have on pirating where it's like, no, like, I'm okay with pirating. I'm a writer myself. I'm an author and I'm okay with people pirating my book because I understand people are short on money. And I get that, I really do, but there are better options that don't perpetuate bad actions, bad behavior, hurtful behavior, that 
authors could take if they really feel that. It's like if somebody stole a bunch of apples from a farmer's market and made their own stand and were giving them away for free, I don't want that apple. It's a stolen good. Just because I personally didn't steal it and you're saying, here, no, 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 it's free. It's for you. It's a service. Doesn't mean that people aren't getting hurt. People deserve just pay for their work. And a community falls, quality work dies when we stop affording people that right. When we feel entitled to something other people have labored over. And that's why this video, this whole, just not this video, <laughs> this video was actually good. I hope you liked it. No, but this whole scandal just makes me upset. And I don't really get that upset about things, but this makes me upset because I do one day wish to be published. And I'm sick of these big corporations and these big companies, people with money and power, the elites of the world, just taking from the little man because they think, who cares? It's just one little guy. We have the power to get away with it. But yeah, that's it for this video. If you like this content, please like the video and consider subscribing before clicking away. YouTube has always been a passion of mine and I've been uploading for many years, although not on this channel. And uh, it would really help me out if you did so. Let me know in the comments if you like this content. I will make more. I liked it. It was fun. And you know, just one little final tidbit that I wanted to add because I just thought of it. Mark Zuckerberg has been going through a little bit of a rebrand recently, okay? Doubling back on words and actions that he's done in the past and saying, you know, he doesn't agree with them anymore. They were wrong. He regrets them. So maybe he no longer agrees because this happened like a year or two ago. But you know what? I highly doubt it. I'm not going to give him the benefit of the doubt on this. It just goes to show that you should never ever place your trust in big companies they do not care about you they truly don't no matter how many times they try to convince you they do with their marketing and their their launches their new launches that help you look at this this phone has ai now and it can just summarize a big paragraph text it's to help you because we know you're really busy be for real you do not care about us. The only reason why you're doing this stuff for us is because it benefits you. Because you know we wouldn't buy your stuff if we knew how much you hated us. You hate us! Anyway, in the wise words of Captain America, they'll never be the ones to make the sacrifice play or lay themselves on the line for others. And you know what? That's not a surprise. My book has been pirated, taken without my consent, and used in a data set that's trained AI models, including Metas. I know about this because of brilliant reporting from The Atlantic. All of us authors are mad, but as someone who makes AI tools as well as writes books, I am even more mad. Do you know what I have trained the tool on? What's my data set? It's me. Nearly six years of content, but technically it's also been trained on my fear. My fear that someone else was going to use my work to train their AI tool for their benefit with without paying me. This is data abuse. I think increasingly that's what we've got to talk about. Where as creatives we've not only consented to our data being used, but where we endorse the use of that data. Where actually we can help inform it to do things like make the internet a better place, or whatever it is you would like to do. Unethical LLMs don't only have disregard for an author's work and fair payment for it. It's zero regard for including creatives in AI innovation. We have ideas, we have voices, and we have something that LLMs don't have. A relationship, hard won, with you. If you ask a tool like Meta AI to write like me, it will echo write. It will imitate not only my style, but my views. But it can't echo or copy the real work. It can't copy the distinct experts, the real people, and the anonymous voices that made losing it happen, with whom rapport and trust had to be built. The silent work of writing that AI can't hear. Losing it might have been absorbed into the great AI goop, but it sure as hell will not be absorbing me. 